Are you getting the most from your additional mouse buttons? In this video, we remap any button to perform a huge selection of functions in Windows, using entirely free software. Hello everyone, and welcome to Tech Fix Flicks. Even in late 2019, Windows still fails to cater natively for more than the standard three button mouse when reprogramming the functions of additional buttons. Typically, if your mouse comes with bundled drivers, they offer your best option for changing the default button functions. And whilst this is a basic expectation with a premium mouse, a more generic model may not be as configurable. To compensate for this, we use X-Mouse Button Control, which adds a great deal of flexibility to even the most humble mouse. We begin by visiting the link shown on screen now, and in the written description accompanying this video. We click the link labelled latest version to begin the download. And once concluded, we click to run. User account control interjects, and we click yes to progress to the installer, where we click next to proceed to the license agreement screen, where acceptance is mandatory and indicated by clicking I agree. There are some helpful installation options offered at the next screen, allowing us to save our settings and log file in a folder of our choosing, rather than accepting the default. And, should we wish to take advantage of this, we can select the box on the right. Otherwise, it's entirely acceptable to use the defaults by leaving the field blank and clicking next. With that, the installation is in progress, and once complete, clicking finish will run the app. Note that the default behaviour hereafter will be to launch Xmouse at startup. A web page is displayed upon successful conclusion of the installation, and note also the placement of a new X-Mouse icon in the lower right. If, as was the case in our testing, the X-Mouse icon subsequently disappears upon closure of the web page, it can be restored by clicking upon the upward pointing arrow to show hidden icons from where we can optionally drag out for ease of access, making the icon permanently visible. We double click that icon to be taken to the main interface window. Whenever we use the main interface window, clicking any mouse button will highlight that button in orange, and in sequence we click our left mouse button, then right, and middle. This feature is possibly most useful in differentiating buttons 4 and 5, as these are the buttons which are both the most difficult to distinguish, and the most likely to be remapped. Having now successfully identified our buttons, we click add to begin the remapping process. For our first example, we would like to remap button 4 to close an active tab in our browser Google Chrome. Without modification, this button would normally function as a back button. At this juncture, Google Chrome isn't found on the list of running applications, simply because it isn't running. So we run it before returning to our list of running applications, where we now find that Chrome has been added to the list. We therefore select Chrome, noting chrome.exe in the application field. The text in the description tag can be customised, and will become the name of the profile when created. We click OK. The profile is now created, inheriting the name from the description tag in the previous window. We want to remap mouse button 4, so we click its drop down. The drop down list shows many configurable options for mouse buttons, and the quantity of options both here and in forthcoming screens shows the flexibility of this application, and the sheer number of possible configurations available. We normally close a browser tab by clicking its close icon, but with multiple pages open, this can lead to multiple repetitive movements to reposition the cursor. We can achieve the same effect via the keyboard shortcut Ctrl W, and it's this keyboard shortcut which we will simulate. From the options available for mouse button 4, we select simulated keys. We need to use the control modifier, and we can see how this is done in the help text, with the use of curly brackets. With the modifier in place, we simply add W and click OK. We can now see mouse button 4 remapped to Control W in Chrome. We click Apply, then click to close. We are presented with the option to save changes made to the configuration, and naturally select Yes here. With our configuration saved, it's time to test it. With a single Chrome tab opened, we click our newly redefined mouse button 4. The open tab is closed, and we are returned to the desktop. We have successfully achieved our objective to remap the mouse button. Here's how we use that in practice. In our Browser Bookmarks Basics tutorial, we demonstrated how multiple favourite web pages could be bookmarked then grouped, and subsequently opened together to create a virtual newspaper or online digest, assuming that your machine has sufficient RAM to accommodate each of the open pages, with the idea being to read and close each page in sequence, and we can now make use of our newly redefined mouse button 4 to close the open pages without moving the pointer. Each subsequent press of mouse button 4 closes another tab. 
So our overall process is to launch a group of browser tabs with two clicks as shown in Browser Bookmark Basics. Then scroll through pages using the scroll wheel which hasn't been remapped. Then close the pages using our mouse button 4, thus greatly reducing mouse movements, decreasing potential wrist strain. Now let's tackle another challenge as we look to map increasing and decreasing system volume levels to the movement of the scroll wheel in our favourite music app. In our Ditch the Disc series, we introduced Music B as our application of choice for lossless audio playback. With Music B already running, we return to the XMouse main interface and click Add. The list of running apps appears, and with Music B selected, we click OK. Once again, a new profile is added, this time named Music B. We click the drop down next to Wheel Up, and we will map this upward movement of the scroll wheel to raise the system volume. We again select simulated keys to achieve this. There is a very straightforward vol plus tag which can be used, so we simply add the tag to the custom key field and click OK. Volume up is now mapped to wheel up in Music B. It's no good raising the volume if we can't lower it, so we map wheel down to volume down by again selecting simulated keys and using the vol minus tag. With that configuration confirmed, we click apply. Having applied the configuration, we now close and test. Returning to our Music B app, we move our mouse wheel up, raising the system volume in 2 degree increments, and of course, moving the wheel downward will lower the volume accordingly. Although we don't need to demonstrate, we would envisage further expanding upon this by configuring the middle button to mute, and buttons 4 and 5 for next and previous tracks respectively. Although described as a hobby project, it's very clear that XMouse has received a great deal of care and attention from the sheer number of configuration options and functions available, and we'll review some of them now. Naturally, we can export our configuration to another machine by clicking the export option and saving as an XMBC settings file. As you can export, you can of course also import. We note that there are 9 options for sending keystrokes, and whilst the default will be fine in most instances, there is a clear flexibility for other applications. The explainer text for simulated keystrokes shows the relevant syntax for modifier keys, extended keys, directions, functions, volume, brightness, mouse buttons and wheels, numeric keypad buttons, browser navigation options and toggles. Special function tags enable the introduction of delay, as well as various key codes. Precise cursor positions and movements can be applied, applications run, windows activated and messages posted. Tags are provided for layer switching, send methods and button press types, with examples provided for various use cases. Taken together, this is a very powerful suite of options extending the capabilities of a generic mouse. For a more advanced configuration, XMouse also accommodates layers to map different functions to the same mouse button and switch between them. We can define scrolling behaviour using the scrolling tab and make further changes using the general options section. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it useful, please consider subscribing by clicking the logo on screen now. If you'd like to see more, there are two suggestions currently on screen. If you have a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. You're also welcome to follow us on Twitter. Until your next tech fix, goodbye.